Bam. Hello, Mr. Pied Piper Man. Hello, how's it going? Well, it's going fine over here. It's six in the morning and you had me wake up early just to do this interview with you. Well, you're, you know, taking me away from a football game going on right now and in the middle of some kinky sex. Whoa. So I, Whoa. Think, uh, <laughs> I think I think one of us is losing more than the other. <laughs> a little bit early. With whom are you having that? Um, I mean, if you sit on your left hand long enough, it becomes a stranger. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, not that well, I yeah, tried you... it, but I've heard about it. Yeah. It's, uh, well, y y you've tried it or you have heard about it? I've heard about it. Like, I've read about it, never tried. I don't know, man. You look like the kind of guy that would do it, you know? Uh, th th that's harsh, but I can get okay. harsher than that because you you're... You're being interviewed right now just because you did an airdrop back in May, was it? Was it in May? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you capitalized on the popularity of a TV show. And by the way, I don't see you blowing any pipes. So why are you the Pied Piper? I don't see any well, mice. <laughs> well, uh, that, those special effects are not, uh, you know, I, I don't have the budget for that right now. I, this, small prop budget as you can tell uh you know some towels in the background uh it's uh definitely not intentional but i guess it goes with the green suit wherever i'm wearing it there you go. a little bit a little bit um but uh pipe piper is, is from the uh, like you said from the show you know the company's name is Pied piper and then uh from silicon valley for those who don't know and they made a cryptocurrency company and um you know or a coin rather and it was the Pied piper coin so that's where the genesis of the of the coin comes from is that it was on a fictional TV show and I made it a real thing. So how did it feel in that first week when you're getting attention from Charlie Lee and Tyler Winkleboss and all these big people in crypto who actually thought that you're affiliated with the show? Um, there was a lot of enthusiasm because first of all, if you're in crypto, you know those people and you look up to them and uh, they're just titans of the industry, and they still are. Um, so it was an amazing feeling of euphoria. And then I started getting all those questions like, are you affiliated with HBO? Are you affiliated with HBO? And, you know, of course, we were going to get them. But, you know, we never said that. And I think that a lot of people realized it was not affiliated with HBO. But, um, you know, once that realization came crashing down, all these guys thought they kind of looked dumb. I, I, I think Tyler Binkleboss, he, he's taken it uh, very well. So is Fluffy Tony. But, um, you know, Tyler, I think that he recognized it was a joke and he engaged with it on a joking basis. And he still likes some of our stuff. And, and even Gemini and us, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and forth on Twitter. Um, and they like our stuff. So I think that, um, you know, we're all good there. But I, I got really nervous because, um, you know, as you recall, I know you, Vlad, personally, you were following the account very early on. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, at certain points, maybe you didn't even know what to make of it. Is this legit? Is this a scam? Is this an exit? You know, what is this guy trying to do over here? And uh, I knew it was going to take time to prove that we weren't a scam and that I keep showing up and we keep working and we're very close to a product we've already put out. Um, our UI out there and, and we'll be having more products coming out very soon. But uh, I think that we have proof to the community that we are real and legit. Uh, but at the time it was very scary because it was volatile. One moment, you know, Charlie Lee and Jimmy Song and Fluffy Pony are all like, oh, we want to be advisors. The next moment they're, you know, saying, oh, we don't want anything to do with them. Um, I was like scared the project was going to die. And, um, you know, all these people would, would have a bad taste in their mouth, which is, you know, at the time, even though it's kind of desperate right now, it was very desperate back then. And that's just not what I wanted to bring to the crypto space. It's what someone cares and loves about. Right. So you decided <laughs> that it's a good idea to be a meme coin, just like Dodge? Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, memes have a lot of value. If you look at the number one thing, I, I think if you looked at the number one thing people do on the internet is share memes and create memes. Memes are a super valuable tool. And I think there is an inherent value in memes. I mean, Dogecoin's just one representation and it's a $400 million uh, meme company, you know, and, and there's t-shirts and all sorts of things that sell on the internet that are just memes that are multi 
million, multi-billion dollar companies. People are becoming very rich off of memes. So I think that uh, memes are funny, but uh, you know, our price uh, is funny to laugh at right now, but maybe not in a year from now. <laughs> okay. But was, Dodge is, is actually a meme which is well established on the internet. And it has mm -hmm. that caption which says much, whatever, such, whatever. So what does yeah. Piper stand for as a meme? Well, we're not going to compete with Doge, okay? I have a Doge myself and um, I don't want to compete with, with Doge. We will lose the Sheeb Wars. Uh, but we want to kind of come under the wing of Doge, come under the leg, if you will, uh, not the one that they lift up to pee. But, um, you know, we, our coin, you know, the mythos really comes in through the show, Silicon Valley. I mean, Doge is well established because of, you know, the Doge, the Sheeb, but uh, we are going to be well established because of Silicon Valley, which is a show that's still going strong. Um, you know, I don't know how many seasons are left. I don't think they've released that, but there's definitely going to be another season. And at least I can see at least two or three more. So that means, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of people running through this thing and looking up, you know, Pied Piper coins, this thing real and they'll find us. So did you ever receive a message from anyone from HBO? Yeah, actually, uh, they, the Silicon Valley show reached out to us, and I, I'll let a few people know about this, but, you know, they were very friendly um, in their messaging to us, but they expressively asked me not to reveal any of the messages that we had between each other. But I will say the nature of it was friendly. Okay. So that's surprising. I actually thought they would be pissed and plan for themselves to have a similar project. Because I guess that's why we had some sort of confusion in the beginning, because we thought that HBO, which is known for buying domains and selling t-shirts and doing all that promotional stuff. And if you watch last week tonight with John Oliver, they like to buy all sorts of crazy stuff just for publicity. And I thought at first that it was legit and this was endorsed by HBO. And up until I actually saw that airdrop happening i thought this was going to be an hbo project and then it was revealed to be something else and i thought it was a scam and that's why i didn't sign up for the airdrop which i still regret to this day <laughs> but you turned out well man thank you i appreciate that but listen i'm a little bit jealous of you vlad because so i'm blocked by nick zabo you're followed by him so that's uh such an honor i mean i'm 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 almost like to a certain uh confidence sure that guy is satoshi so it's a uh, very I'm disheartening so to, to myself but um you know i want you to ask him you are his follower or he's following you you know you gotta send him a message and be like bro why did you block that type of coin just please do me <laughs> one favor because okay. i don't know what it is maybe he was worried i was blowing his cover i don't know man he just I'm like, does this guy even pay attention to me? I comment on his stuff. I like his stuff. I share his stuff. And bam, you know, I'm blocked. Blocked. So I don't know, man. It's outrageous. I'm, I'm upset, but I'm also like, I don't know what to do, man. I'm, I'm so confused. I guess you can read his blog, the unenumerated. That's like the best resource to read about blockchains and social scalability and all sorts of studies, which Nick Sabo does. And to me, it's fascinating. And I remember the night when I saw that he followed me and it was because I wrote an article about his project, which mm. is basically trying to use radio short waves to relay signal to the nearest Bitcoin node so that you can make transactions through radio waves across borders. And to me, that's insane. He thought about how do I bypass the Chinese firewall? And yeah. he's come up with this crazy idea, which comes from the Cold War, when the Russians and the Western states were using radio waves to bypass borders and transmit signals and messages to people who are actually against their regimes. Yeah. I mean, he's a genius, you know, he, he's, a, he's a freaking genius of our time uh, who's not nearly talked ab about as much as he should. Like, sure, in crypto, everyone knows Nick Zaba, but outside of crypto, you'd be hard pressed to find people who know him and, and, and what he's done and what he's going to do. 
So yes, please just shoot him a message. Be like, bro, what's going on? What's what's up with Ty Piper coin? And and hopefully, you know, he uh, it's a mistake. He meant to block some some ether Ethereum scammer, and I don't know. I just got mixed up. I I don't know. But uh, you need to you need to get me back in his good graces, man. I'm like straight up, please. <laughs> okay, I promise I will. And I'll send you a screenshot, right, but cool. I don't think you'll reply to me. I'm so unimportant. Shoot him like a little clip of this video. Tell him <laughs> I will not take off these handcuffs until he unblocks me. And you know what? I think I'm going to tag him in a message and say, Dear Mr. Sabo, I've had this conversation during the interview, and he's just sorry for whatever he did that he upset you. And would you please just take him back? Yeah. Please, baby, come back. You know, if I had a soundboard, I would have done that. You know the song? No. Well, if I had a um, what? No, this. If I had a soundboard, you know, like uh. Oh, like okay. Sound effects right over here. I would do like the baby come back. You know. <laughs> okay. The song. All right. That's strange. We, you, that well, strange you need stuff music. like that. You know what I mean? What do you mean? You're from Romania. You don't know. Yeah, you'll see. Americans will tell you, okay? Baby wow. Come Back is, is an integral part of, of culture. Okay. Who sings it? I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess that's an integral part of being an American, knowing songs and not remembering their artists. Yeah, I mean, kind of. Was that harsh enough? Yeah, that was good. That was, you got me, Blab. All right, next question. Come on. It's, it's so hot in here. You know how oh, hot yeah. it is? It's so hot. Uh, there's a song about it. I think Nelly sings it. It's getting hot in here, so take <laughs> off all your clothes. Yeah. There you go. You got it. I mean, at least you know the artist, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I remember I wrote an article about you when I was at that other crypto media, which I'm not going to name drop in here. But you mentioned that you'd start a show which was about exposing scams. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, it's called Crypto Cops, and that's kind of why I got the uh, prop over here from the show. Um, it, it's, a, it's a show that's going to be like revealing like uh, scam artists or scam personalities or scammy type events. And it's been taking me a very long time. I've been talking about it for like a month or two. I feel like it's my version of, uh, I don't know if you know who Dr. Dre is. I'm sure you know Dr. Dre. No, Dr. Dre? Yeah. Like the music producer who yeah, sang yeah, with yeah. Eminem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he has his album called Aftermath that never came out, but he always jokes about it. So it's kind of like my Aftermath. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get it out there and I'm trying to do a good video. I'm trying to make it funny. But here's the thing is like, I feel like in the time that we're in right now, uh, very good produced content won't go that far because everyone's so fucking depressed when you talk about crypto and prices. So I feel like if I just talk about scammers and I'm like, ah, oh, this scammer, that scammer, blah, 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 blah. And it's like very serious and not funny. Um, you know, it's just going to make people feel more depressed. And that's not what I'm trying to do in the space. Obviously, the coin is a meme coin. I shit post a lot. I try to be funny with the interviews I do. Um, you know, I'm not trying to bring anyone down. I'm not trying to make anyone feel stupid. So that's why I'm kind of like hesitant right now to do crypto cops. I kind of want to do it in, in a more uh, positive uh, setting, in a more positive time where people can sit back and laugh and be like, oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know about that. I know they're a scammer. And, you know, uh, kind of like because history is a good reminder, you know, to avoid it in the future. And that's kind of what I want to be doing with that. I think you should be working with the people from do I own a shitcoin.com. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they've been very receptive to the coin. So, yeah, I can definitely talk with them. Uh, I remember I spoke to them like this week, I think. And they proposed to me that I would write for them. And I said, you know, I don't know much about shitcoins. I focus on the good news. I focus on the good stuff. I try to bring news about Bitcoin and Litecoin, Ethereum, and all the projects that will be around for longer than five years. But they, Pied Piper coin. yeah, Pied Piper, <laughs> of course. 
Why yeah, did you laugh? Obviously. What's what's funny? When you well, laughing? you need a network, right? So who's going to support it? It's still an ERC token on the Ethereum blockchain. What, Vlad? You're not going to support it? I didn't say that. <laughs> but I don't know any, so. Yeah. No, I mean, we're an ERC, but, like, it doesn't make sense to move off of, ER, like, being an ERC-20. It makes sense to build an ecosystem around where we're at right now. Um, reason being, uh, we can, we can utilize the smart contracts without leaving the platform of Ethereum. And I know a lot of people could say, oh, just fork another smart contracts platform or whatever. Yeah, great. And then where are you going to get the infrastructure from? Because Ethereum is only great because of its infrastructure. And that's, you know, and it's only, you know, so great. It's not even that good. But, um, you know, you have a lot of these smart contract platforms that have no infrastructure. And that's where the money is made. That's where the dApps live. And that's how um, every, everything's kind of done. So in Ethereum right now, we have two DEXs. For those who don't know, decentralized exchanges that we're a part of. We have two DApps that we're building. It's like if we leave Ethereum, then we lose all that. We're, we're losing four different uh, value propositions to our coin. And for what? So that someone can mine the coin. I mean, eventually I want that. I want people to be able to do that. But for what we're building right now, it's more important to me to actually build real value because you can already mine, you know, 2,000 fucking coins right now or whatever it is. And they don't do shit where you can, you know, you may not be able to mine our coin, but at least our coin has a value proposition to it. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. So on top of the two dApps and multiple exchanges that we're on, we're, uh, we just announced this uh, week or last week um, that we're going to be adding a DAO and governance to uh, on top of the ERC-20 token. So it's very exciting stuff. I mean, this is like a coin, 10 million uh, coins out there, and we're doing governance, we're doing a DAO, we're doing two fucking DAPs. One of them is a token curated registry. I mean, in my opinion, we're killing the freaking game. And we're like a two cent coin, like a less than $200,000 market cap. I mean, that's to me insane. When, when people out there, once we can actually afford to do some marketing or something, you know, people are going to go crazy over this thing. And I've done the calculation. If you put $3,000 into this coin, uh, you know, the, the price would jump up to like 50 cents. It would jump up to, I think, a million dollar market cap or half a million. You know, just like that at three thousand dollars. So um, it doesn't take much uh, liquidity to make the price actually sky high. To all the traders, I guess that was the shilling part of your ICO. Oh, ah, whatever. Fuck it. But it wasn't oh, an ICO because whatever. nobody put any money in it, and you just distributed distributed the coins by yourself. Right. Right. And I also paid about six thousand dollars total so far, and I've made about four k off of the coin. Just transparency. You might even break even at some point. Maybe I don't know, man. Maybe my efforts one day will pay off, or maybe I'll just be that weirdo in a fucking bathroom doing an interview with that guy Vlad. I was actually going to ask you if that's your bathroom. And if that's the yeah. toilet that you're sitting on? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Weird. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy that you have your mask because it blocks the reverberations around the room. So I cannot tell that it's a bathroom. Oh, shit. Like, literally. <laughs> I guess I'm not going to transcribe that part when I write the article. No, you can do that. <laughs> Flush. So you when you speak of yeah. we, as in your team for the Pied Pipe Piper coin, how many people do you talk about? Um, I mean, there's at least one entire coding team that's working on stuff. So I'd say like five to six people there. And then we have, um, I want to say, seven community managers and one advisor. Um, so we have a pretty uh, up there team. I mean, everyone's kind of, uh, you know, eating uh, breadcrumbs uh, from Pied Piper. It's like, you know, people understand I can't afford to pay a lot. And 
they're doing this because they believe in the coin they believe in the uh, ideology which is transparency and doing what the community wants and uh you know showing the world that you can build fucking dApps and governance and all these other cool fancy terms that people like to say and you don't need a hundred million dollars but hey it'd be nice because if i had a hundred million dollars i'd be doing the same shit those other guys do i would be buying a lambo and all that because they don't need it that's literally why they're able to do that because if they actually needed a hundred million dollars you wouldn't see this whole lambo moon bullshit just saying so wouldn't you say that you're slightly above the morals of the Lambo people? No. That's it? No. I don't know. I don't I don't like to portray myself as morally superior, you know. I don't know. Maybe they're fucking helping out kids in Haiti or Puerto Rico. I don't know. I'm not here to say, oh, big money's bad. I'm just saying that if I had money like that, I'd be using it differently. I mean, like look at fucking EOS, which is a multi billion dollar you know they have block one raised billions of dollars for eos and it's been an utter disappointment i'm hoping that shit comes out that's good but it's like you know the the latest to come out of there is a chinese uh, vote manipulation out of there uh there's no infrastructure that's built around it barely anything going on so i mean it's just an example of how money is being squandered in the space by people who are you know i think there's a lack of trust is is a big part of it because it's like who do you who do you trust you know because once you push out code for crypto it's very different than any program or software out there i mean you're talking about little cash and value so you better make sure what you're putting out there is like fucking good and clean um and i think that is is a big problem in crypto right now is that who do you trust to do that and who can do that job and who's a bullshitter and who can blow your operation up, you know, because it, all it takes is one disgruntled employee with a little bit too much access and bam, all your treasuries are drained. So it's, uh, it's a wonder to me that, I mean, I don't even know if I had a hundred million dollars, I think Pied Piper coin would be the best coin out there like by far, because I put that straight up into development, maybe buy one Lambo. Okay. And then give it away. Just I mean, I want to get to a point with Pi Piper coin that we can actually buy a Tesla and give a Tesla away to our community. I think that would be awesome. I think that would be peak Pi Piper coin. And we can how, actually how buy does one give away a Tesla to an entire community? Well, you run off with Tesla. You know? We're off with it. I don't know what. I don't, listen, let's get there first where we can comfortably buy a Tesla. And then we'll worry about how to give it away. But uh, I imagine uh, quite a few people sign up for something. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out that's, I don't know, worth it to us and worth it to the community um, to, you know, do something like that. Do you think that at some point in the future of the coin, you're going to maybe sponsor some sports events just like Dodge did with NASCAR or become like a currency which is used during Twitch live broadcasts? I think I could see us doing a whole range of things. I mean, I wanted to do some cool stuff in the past. I'm not going to reveal it right now, some cool promotions. So if, if it's in our interest and it's in our budget, yeah, we'll definitely do it. And as far as like tipping bots and stuff for Twitch and Twitter and all that good stuff, yeah, we definitely, we, we have people that um should be working on it i mean this one guy was working on it but then i haven't heard from him in, in a while uh for twitter uh, i haven't looked at twitch or anything like that honestly for the tip bots i kind of want with the community um take a role in that because i feel like we as a development team are taking our core efforts into like i said the, the dApps the the da the t um the governance that kind of stuff which is going to take it's taking a lot of fucking time right now, as you can tell. Um, and doing the tip bot, although it may be simple for some people, I mean, it's just like there's not enough time of the day, you know, between the stuff I have to do and they have to do. Um, yeah, I just I think that uh, we could definitely use the help of the community on that. So before Pied Piper Coin, for how long have you been involved in crypto? 
Um, since 2015, uh, you know, uh, that's when I really got into it, but I mean, I was in, I wasn't on Twitter or nothing, but I started hearing about Bitcoin in 2013. Um, and then I didn't really understand what the hell it was or why people valued it so much. I looked at a few, uh, prices and I was like, a eh, hundred dollars for some digital currency. Why the fuck would anyone pay that much money for something that's just on the internet? And obviously I was ignorant. I didn't realize what the fuck I was doing at the time. So, um, I didn't buy, but I started like my money heavily started going in in 2015. Once I actually learned what the hell blockchain is. But if it wasn't for the Pied Piper coin, would you still be involved? at this level in the cryptocurrency industry? Um, who knows, you know? I mean, I can't tell you one way or another. Uh, Pied Piper Coin has given me a lot of different avenues and different connections that have been great. But I mean, even before Pied Piper Coin, I knew some pretty cool people. Um, and who knows, maybe I would have gotten further if I just focused on my own stuff, not being Pied Piper Coin, you know? Maybe doing this has hurt me, I don't know. Hopefully not. Hopefully, you know, my efforts will pay off here and our developers' uh, efforts will pay off here. You think that Gemini will add you to their <laughs> market? I don't know, man. I, I don't know. That would be amazing. And I think that they would love to do it if they could without any legal ramifications. But I think that um, I, I don't see it in the near future. I think that if they decide to do what Coinbase is doing, which is like, you know, they'll add any shit coin nowadays to Coinbase is what they're basically saying, as long as, you know, you pass a very weak criteria. Um, I can see this going on Gemini. I don't think it's that. If they, if they do that, they try to compete with uh, Coinbase and they start to add a bunch of coins. And I mean, hey, I'll submit to Gemini. You know, I don't like Coinbase. I'm not, I'm not even going to submit um, a thing to Coinbase because of their I just, I, I don't like what they're doing. I feel like they're the evil empire of uh, crypto. What do you not like about Coinbase? Because to so many people, it's the first gateway to Bitcoin. And they see it as the most simple and maybe ac the most accessible interface that they can have. I mean, there's been a lot of sh shady things in the past. Um, you know, first of all, very high fees. Um, if you're trading, if you're trading off of Coinbase .com, not GDAX, um, the fact that uh, they didn't implement SegWit for a long time, which also affected fees um, for transferring Bitcoins. Um, there's just been some other moves and other shoddy stuff. I, I just think that um, under the table, you know, it, it's like a lot of these guys, not just Coinbase, but a lot of these guys in crypto sold a lot of Bitcoin to get Bitcoins in 2017. And now they're also all stuck in the mud, just like the rest of us. And they're trying to make as much money as possible. And that's why you see a lot of their efforts are like, where do you see Coinbase isn't focusing their efforts on uh, Bitcoin. They're focusing their efforts on uh, shit coins and ERC-20 tokens and just coins out there that, um, you know, are not the backbone of crypto. But I mean, it's great that they're going to have more coins on their exchange. I think that's a positive thing. Um, because it removes that whole coin-based effect where, you know, if they list a coin, it pumps up like stupid, except recently it didn't. I mean, you saw Ethereum Classic. I think it went up like 20% and that was it and it never went back up again. So um, I think it's a good thing that that effect, the coin-based listing effect will be gone uh, because it shouldn't matter if a coin is being traded on a, on a different market. Um, it, if the coin's worth money, then it's worth money, but it's not worth any more than it was yesterday if it's listed on a new exchange today. My personal opinion, but I know people in crypto disagree with that. Yeah, sure. And I've seen it yeah. happen with Litecoin and then Bitcoin Cash. Oh, yeah, they went sky high. I mean, I remember trying to fucking send some Bitcoin Cash to Coinbase just to sell it at like 3x, and I got bottlenecked with anyone else. I mean, if anyone, if you tried to trade uh, Bitcoin Cash all day, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. But there was some error and they displayed the wrong price and they stopped all transactions and you couldn't withdraw and it was frozen and it fucking collapsed. It was a, it was a, tra it was a tragic, tragic.
complete tra- tragedy. Blah, 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 blah. Was tragedy or travesty? Travesty. There it is. I can't speak anymore. It's late over here, okay? You know? It's too early over here. <laughs> and I, I know. didn't sleep. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to ask you if we spoke about Coinbase and you said you do that show of yours, and by the way, you're creeping me out right now with your head movements. But anyway, if you do your first episode of that show, which you're trying to be like a cop of crypto, you think the topic would be Coinbase? Oh, no. I don't know. I mean, they're kind of like, like I said, evil empire, but they've done a good job of like, you know, there's not too much funny stuff you can say about them. So I'll have to look into that. But I have, I, I, I have my first target in mind. Um, I don't want to reveal it right now, obviously, because that would be kind of productive and not, you know, people wouldn't click on the video because it'd be like, oh, literally, no, he's just like, so um, I'm not going to say it, but I already have the first topic that I want to talk about. And then I am launching a podcast, which is going to be basically funny, but uh, controversial topics and, and politics and all that sexy stuff. Mm, politics. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just like I have no desk in this. I just moved, so I have no desk here. So this is why I was like, "Fuck it, I'm doing it on the toilet." You know, this is like I'm, as I'm, good I'm of not a desk. going to ask any questions about why you don't have a desk and why you wear the handcuffs in the toilet. Are you sure? Those are important questions. I don't know if your viewers will be happy. If you want to ask. Oh, they're not my viewers. And I hope you're going to bring a large audience to this. I really hope so too. But you know, that's oh, I don't know. We'll see. So, we'll see. wait, you have a Pied Piper logo on that pizza slice on your chest? Yeah. Oh, that that's actually nice. I just noticed. I'm puffing out of my chest. I'm not fat, I promise. I'm a little bit fat, but that's besides the point. I can tell by your hands. What's wrong with my hand? You have fat fingers. Oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> You're an asshole. I have fat fingers. Fuck you. How fat is that one? <laughs> okay. Let, let me think if I wanted to ask you anything else. What's up with your background? Like, why is it so blurred? Are those curtains? Is that green screen? What the fuck is going on behind you? It's a little bit of both, I guess. It's not the right color for a green screen, but they're like drapes. And uh, I thought it looks better. If you watch my other interview, you can see the wardrobe, which is to my right. And I thought it looks so much better to have the drapes. It's like, it, they have a vibe to it, unless the, unlike the wardrobes, which are. It's like you're black. in perfect HD, but your background's in like 240p. I swear, I don't, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> okay. Strange. But I guess that's a nice retro effect. I guess. So, what else you got, Vlad? Anything else? Yeah. Let's see. What's the nastiest question I can ask you right now? What the fuck? I, I, don't, I don't think you want to know the answer, Vlad. Uh, I'll go easy on you. How about, do you think you'll ever get invited to be a part of the Silicon Valley TV show? To have a cameo or something? Um, I don't think it's out of the, I don't think it's out of contention. I mean, I really don't. I think that maybe they'll do someone that mocks me and, and goes on the show and people will be, oh my God, is that him? And it's not me. But hey, I mean, if they do that, I'll fucking welcome something like that. They're very meta show and they're very in the pop culture and i think that maybe you know they saw me take their idea make it real and they'll take me and make me fake i don't know but uh maybe they'll make me an imposter on the show i don't know if they'll personally reach out to me and have me come on the show but i would fucking do it i'll tell you that right now i would love to be a part of the show and hey listen mr mike judge who's the uh, creator of the show i'm a great actor you can see from my expressions. 
How about you do some impersonation of famous actors? Um, give me give me an actor and I'll do one. Al Pacino. Another one. Come on, just do say hello to my little friend and I'm not going to scream because it's too early. Well, I can't scream, it's so late, you know? Okay, how about, um, do you want an older one or a more contemporary one? Marilyn Brando? Yeah, we'll, go. Well, we'll go with Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger, you know, because he's the easiest. Get through the chopper! Yeah. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll, I'll be back. There we go. Yeah, that's, that, good. That, that's good. Yeah. I'll be back with more weapons and a pipe pipe of coin will be worth 50 cents. And if you don't buy it now, you will, I will throw you out to the chopper. Uh, that, that wasn't tell me, so good. You didn't think, tell me you didn't think Arnold Schwarzenegger just got on the microphone right now and just nah, took it. No. I don't think you'd be such okay. a great actor. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, I'll work on it, okay? You know, it's it's busy up in here. It's also very hot up in here. Mm. Like three layers. Yeah, it's toasty, man. You want to get in on this? I'm a sweaty, hairy monster right now with some handcuffs. can cancel this video and make it interesting. Make a new video. <laughs> <laughs> That's nasty, but... You should know that Romanians are champions in erotic video chatting. So if you go on any webcam website with erotic models, you have yeah. very high chances of finding, finding Romanians. Mm. We actually did a, what's it called? Like the math, the calculus. We did the math and figured out that 1% of the GDP of Romania comes from video camming. Nice. That's great. But I'm not going to prove that. It's okay. Let me ask you something, Vlad. You got a very long hair over there. Do you, do you like, you know, when you're not in your crypto thing, do you put on a bra and put on some makeup and pretend to be a woman? Only for you, baby. <laughs> oh, great. This is, this is turn. This is making a turn. I don't think we should leave this in. We should make this private. Right now. No, I actually yeah. try to get the look of a French aristocrat from the 18th century. Like, it's working for you. I'll tell you that. It's working. I'm trying. But it's natural like this. I, I don't curl it. I used to have long hair, you know. It wasn't as curly as it was. I used to have hair up to here. I used to, I wanted to be a Motley crew. It was more like a mullet, you know. No, I know Motley crew, so you should be a few years older than I am. Uh, I, you know, maybe I'm 12. Who cares? No, you're not. I don't think no. 12 years old. 12 year olds. I don't know how to speak anymore. 12 years old. Ah, 12 year olds wear their hair long and listen to Motley Crue. Well, that was definitely me back then. Yeah. So, so uh, what do you want to tell our audience before closing and ending this interview? Be scared. Be very afraid. No. Um, well, uh, you can do a Guy Fox impersonation. There's no impersonation. The guy just, what am I going to do? Blow up the parliament? Oh, shit. Wait. Uh, can't be saying things like that anymore these days. Remember, Guy remember Fox the 5th of November. You know, he would not have made it far in today's society. He'd be like touching his body, like, yo, you want to blow up parliament? Bam, they're on him. Like, he would have, there, there would have been no mass. This guy would have just gone to jail like any other loony tune. But um, what do I, I want to say? I don't know, man. Just keep on looking at the coin. Keep looking at development. Participate in the community. We're a good fucking bunch. And, you know, if you want to be a part of a coin that's doing things that multi-hundred million dollar coins are trying to do as well, um, we didn't ask anyone for any money. And if you want to buy us, great. I think, it, I think uh, you know, well, I don't want to say what I was just about to say because I don't want to make any investment advice. But, uh, you know, you, you, you feel free to do what you want with your money. But if you don't want to give any money and you want to just participate with us, 
um, I welcome that, you know, and uh, we should be getting on uh, to exchanges within uh, these next few months or early in 2019. And uh, our dApps are coming out in the next, uh, like one of them is definitely coming out in the next week or two. And then another one should be wrapped up in a month. So a lot of exciting stuff coming out from Pi Piper Coin. Um, I don't know. I'll fucking kinky sex, uh, you know, whatever. Let's take that away too. Uh, do it. Don't be vanilla. And uh, eat ass like Romano. What? Catch them all. Catch them all. I don't know. <laughs> that was random. I mean, shout out. I mean, the guy saved crypto. I mean, he tried to, but. For three days or something. Yeah, well, Jesus is only. You know, came back after three days, so maybe it's a sign. I don't know. Maybe crypto's dead. Maybe it's never coming back. No, it's not. Who cares? At, at least we had fun with it, right? At least you got followed by Nick Zabe, right? That's all that matters. Oh yeah, that, that to me that's more precious than being followed by a million people who want financial like, when advice. When I followed you, were you as impressed as when Nick Zabe followed you, or no? I'm not honest. going to answer that. I'm I'm not allowed to in, insult my guests. Okay, okay, I respect that. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so All I'll right. see you around. We'll wrap this up. This was nice. Sounds good. Yeah, it's good. Wait, I should.